Incana is a leading North American natural gas company. With ingenuity and technical leadership, along with our land position in Canada and the U.S., we've become one of the largest producers of natural gas. Natural gas is a reliable, abundant, clean-burning fossil fuel that plays an important role in helping meet the growing demand for energy in North America. Coal bed methane is versatile and has the potential to replace many of the carbon-based fuels we use today. We've got a certain strategy, what we call sort of our resource play strategy, and some of these plays may last 50 to 100 years. It's about uh, 2000, 2003 as we've been developing it out here. It's one of the most environmentally benign fossil fuels that exist in the world today for several reasons. Um, for the first reason, and that is just pure methane. And it's not like the natural gas that comes out of most of the conventionals. This is a pure methane, so one of the most clean burning fossil fuels that exist. It is also uh, produces at a very low pressure. You can compare it to your dryer vent for flow and pressure. When your dryer vent is blowing and you're drying clothes, it's about the same um, flow and pressure that our wellheads, our CBM wellheads flow at. It also uh, produces little to no water. About 90% of the current CBM development in Alberta has come from the dry Horseshoe Canyon coals in south central Alberta. Coal seams lay several hundred meters below surface. The individual seams can vary in thickness. A typical coal bed methane well might intersect 20 to 30 separate seams. The gas sits in fractures in the coals called cleats. The bigger the cleats, the better the flow of gas from the coals. Natural gas trapped in these shallow reservoirs is low pressure. Coal bed methane produced in the Horseshoe Canyon does not produce water and is sweet, which means it does not contain hydrogen sulfide. This natural gas is extremely low pressure. A wellhead here is 5 pounds per square inch, or PSI. Compare that to the natural gas meter going into your home, which is about 15 PSI. The gas here produces approximately 500 million cubic feet per day. That's enough natural gas to heat over 2 million homes every day. Really, everybody that uses energy is going to benefit from coal bed methane. It's, it's the cleanest burning fossil fuel that exists. It typically takes 18 months of planning before a single well is even surveyed. Together with landowners, sure. occupants, and the Energy Resources Conservation Board, or ERCB, right. we discuss how the land is used. Okay. We survey the site, assess the land, and create a mutually beneficial surface lease agreement. This is submitted to the ERCB. If the plan is approved, the drilling process begins. Here's how the drilling process works. Bentonite and water are circulated in the well bore by pumping from top to bottom and back up again. Drill cuttings are lifted to the surface where they're removed. After a well has been drilled to its surface casing depth, casing is lowered into the hole and cemented to ensure there is no movement of gas or water between different underground formations. Then the well is drilled to its total depth and once again casing is lowered into the hole and cemented to surface this specialized cement is impermeable and seals the space between the outside of the casing string and the wall of the well bore. This creates a permanent barrier, which protects water aquifers from hydrocarbon bearing zones and formation water zones. Simply put, it protects groundwater, which is essential for all of us. We definitely understand the importance of groundwater. I mean, it, it is probably, a, you know, the most important resource that we do have. And so far we've had zero uh, groundwater disturbances and we're quite happy with that. And we've had independent studies by hydrologists and Alberta Research Council can confirm that our coal bed methane uh, development is not impacting groundwater. Typically drilling a coal bed methane well here takes about a day. The completions phase begins with the well being logged and perforated. Because the gas from coal bed methane wells is so low pressure, many require stimulation to increase the well's flow rate. We stimulate using 100% nitrogen. Nitrogen makes up about 78% of the air we breathe. The well is completed, tested and tied in. And Canna has decades of experience here and much of the infrastructure to produce CBM is already in place. We can use existing well bores, we can use existing pipelines that are already in the ground, so we're minimizing our impact in terms of the amount of surface leases required as well as access roads. 
Once a well is tied in and producing, the footprint around the lease site is reduced. This is what the wellhead looks like for the remainder of production. Depending on the well, it may require additional pressure or a compression system to move the gas through the pipeline. Right now I'm sitting about 100 yards outside the fence of a booster compressor site. This site has two compressors on it and you can tell by the fact that you can hear me speaking and I'm not shouting that the noise is relatively minimal. In our compressors, we can minimize those and keep them very quiet so it's all the fabric of the, of the minimum disturbance. Minimal disturbance, the farmers can farm over it and just you're very sensitive to when you access the wells. After a reclaim, you would never know we were here. We realize not everyone is comfortable with CBM activity in their backyard. And we know there are many interests to consider when developing coal bed methane. Our permits that we receive from various regulators really don't mean anything if we don't have the support of our stakeholders. And the only way to get the support of the stakeholders and really them giving you that license to operate is to build trust. I sit down with landowners as we're negotiating access and we talk about these things and we're working in some pretty pretty densely populated areas with some really savvy landowners. If we don't have that trust with the landowners, they're not going to believe us. It's, it's going to make it a difficult time for us to negotiate future land deals or future pipelining or future well development in the areas. I think probably the most important thing when coal bed methane comes knocking on your door is that you're open to communication. We were concerned about our aquifers, um, our water aquifers uh, was one of our major concerns. Um, the amount of traffic that would be coming in and out, um, noise levels, um, introducing new weeds into our area. Yeah, there's a lot of people don't like these wells and all that, but they burn fuel as well as I do, lots of it, and it has to come from somewhere. At the very beginning, it, it didn't seem like it was actually going to work out, but with communication and patience and multiple meetings, it's worked out really well. What we do is we do some planning and we try to anticipate the problems that we're going to see and we build in plans to make sure that we don't have problems. I use all the learnings that I gather from the development and from responding to, to unforeseen events and I use that to build practices within the company of how we execute our activities. We have to know ahead of time what in Canada is going to do. If they're going to come in here and drill a well, we want to know where they're going to drill it. We want to know when and where the surveyors are going to come in. We want to know where the service roads are going to be and where the pipeline is going to be. Let's get all that agreed upon before they start coming in and, uh, and drilling this well. And if we know ahead of time, we're a lot easier to work with. It's essential that when we get our engineered construction packages from Calgary, that any landowner commitments or concerns are actually in that package. If you see something that you don't agree with or you're questioning how they're doing it, ask questions. Try and get a solution uh, that's good for both of you. Even if it's not what you want to hear or it's not exactly the way you wanted it to go, they're going to tell you the honest truth and, and basically that's all I'm looking for is the truth. We have to be the stewards of our own land. Um, we've got to look out for our own interests. We know what our land's like. It's their land and they're the custodians and we want to make sure that they have a, a say in what we do and also that they understand that there's regulatory requirements that we must follow. If it's done properly, there's no problem with wells going in. It really needs to be open dialogue, right? And that open dialogue then needs to be followed by um, demonstration that you follow through on what you say. So it really is all about demonstrating on the ground um, how you conduct yourself.